Alrighty, let's do it. G'day guys, welcome once again to the Tripod where we break down every NRL game every week from a betting perspective. Pretty grim week this week, going 13 and 23 on best bets. So not the not the best um, start to, to Jacob getting back from holidays, but it's kind of an annoying one because, I mean, we, we said at the start of the round, like, favorite plays were like eels, favorite plays were sharks, and of course they both win and cover, but for some reason, every other game was just an absolute abomination, and that's what happens sometimes when a lot of favorites win in a single round of NRL and we take a lot of underdogs. Jacob, how are you, buddy? Yeah, I feel like I need another holiday after that round. That was yeah, just a lot le- of games. you should leave again. Not enjoyable, some of those games. And look, I don't want to sit here and make excuses. We're going to face the music and break down game by game. And instead, I want to look at each game, especially the four where we got trounced. And I want to find reasons why we got it wrong, not excuses of why we tipped aside. Like, Because you've got to admit sometimes when you're wrong as a better but yeah, it's one of those weeks where all the, the gun sides did roll. It makes me think, let's start the finals now. You've got really eight sides that actually look like they want to play. A lot of other sides, you know, we thought with six weeks left that most teams would still play for their fans. It wasn't the case. Dead set, some teams are already, their minds are already in Bali and that cost us dearly. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just start with the game we just watched. It was the Eels beating the Dragons 12-4. to One of the games that we did win on this week had four best bets on it and went three and one. Honestly, I think that the Eels should have probably won by more. They were the much better team in the first half. Um, and they were up 10 nil. And at that point, you're kind of thinking, if they can just score the first try of the second half, they'll probably run away with this. Um, and then obviously the Dragons get a try that shouldn't have been a try. Um, and then they're right back in it. They're only a converted try behind. And that, you know, the Eels, they seemed fatigue to me it was a funny one like they seemed fatigued in that last 20 minutes of the game I don't know what it was but um yeah they're I guess pretty lucky to scrape out of that one but they could have put the dragons to the sword and they just didn't um really thought the dragons would fold after you know having that dream crusher last week but they didn't this week they just weren't good enough oh the dragons didn't look too interested to be fair it was more as you say the eels refusing to land a killer blow never mind had they scored the first try in the second half. Even in the first half, they made multiple breaks when they were yep. 10-0 up. You get to 16-0, and it could be another you know, big score like we've seen plenty of this round. But if they scored a try in the second half, you think about the number of breaks and goal line sets, they somehow just could not quite get over the line, and they lost the second half by two points. And we had them plus a half a point. We had them as an underdog. But it was definitely the right side to, to take. They're a side that looks like they're keen to have a go and roll towards the finals. The, the Eels are a pretty good side. And hey, they did enough to win, even though we would have liked it to be more comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. And we crossed out the Dragons. Well, we pretty much crossed out the Dragons last week from finals footy. I think now we can uh, definitely put a line through the Dragons. Um, Thursday night, the Tigers beat the Cowboys 28-4. to We had three best bets on the game. Went 2-1. and one. Um, Unfortunately, yeah, the Tigers just absolutely trounced them. And that's what we kind of said was going to be a bit of a worry um, with the Cowboys just, you know, having that dream crusher loss the previous Thursday to so the Sharks. were up, They're up 14-4. And it was always a worry that the, the Cowboys wouldn't show up. They did show up for most of the game, I guess. Um, and then they kind of folded in the second half. But Tigers just too good. And once again, they're probably one another team that, that actually deserves to be playing finals footy. They moved their way back into the eight as well now. Yeah, obviously you have the big five sides, which we're going to get to. You have the Eels, who we just spoke about there, win. The Sharks looked good. And the Tigers are now in eighth. That's why I said start the finals now, because they're the only eight sides having a go. And they're all, you know, the other blokes, are, yeah, their minds are elsewhere. But in this one, I was probably wrong in talking you out of taking the Tigers. It's another case where we got the game right, but didn't get enough winning plays on it. And we picked unders, but... We still only won two out of three plays, even though the game went well under. And that's because the Tigers are a pretty good defensive side and they they ripped in. And the Cowboys, why did I think they would even compete? I hate the Cowboys and they're so shit in attack. And (coughs) what did they score? Four points or so in that game. So we we did actually win money on that Thursday. And then the snowball began. Uh, It started with the Raiders absolutely absolutely beating up on the Warriors, 46 to 12. I... We kind of mentioned that we thought that it was a really bad spot for the Raiders there, you know, coming off the short turnaround with travel from from Penrith to New Zealand, five-day turnaround, that they may be a bit fatigued. Um, But our one worry worry was, you know, would the Warriors have a similar sort of dream crusher? And, you know, because obviously they got robbed last week, um, you know, should have won that game. 
And do they go home and think, fuck, now our finals hopes are dashed? Or do they go home and think, fuck, we still have a chance of making the eight. Let's play some footy here. This is like our last chance. And it was definitely the former of those two options. They did not show up. And if you don't show up against this Raiders team, even if they are a little bit fatigued um, from travel, etc., and a short turnaround, then you're going to get blown out. But absolute P-heart effort from the Warriors, and we can now officially strike a line through them for finals as well. Yeah, if you didn't see the game, it was 30-0 to the Raiders at half time, and we took the Warriors like plus four and a half, plus two and a half in the first half. Like some markets we felt were decent. We had our reasons. We respect the Raiders. We know how good they are. We thought that they would be worn out, but we spoke about travel. They minimized their travel by going straight from Penrith to New Zealand and have spoken about this team looks like nice and tight knit. That was probably a good bonding session, a bit like going into an origin camp where they meant business because they kept the team together. So they came out to play. And the Warriors, I mean, if you saw Steve Kearney's spray, you saw how filthy he was. He was, I and mean, he's not, he's usually a pretty chilled character. He was fucking losing his mind. You watch, and you can lip read very easily things he's saying like, <laughs> put your fucking body on the line. And if you've got to tell NRL players to do that, well, the funny thing is we spend hours breaking down the games, looking through every market, trying to find the best half point five cents of value, 10 cents of value. It goes out the window when one side doesn't show up. But I will say we got it wrong as well because the Warriors look back at their recent games. You got a 90-minute draw against Brisbane. You got a one-point win over the Sharks, a two-point win over the Knights, a two-point loss to the Eels. I think all those games down to the wire wore them out. They were the tired team on Friday, not the Raiders. They got flogged. We got screwed with our tips. And another one, which was an absolute trouncing, which I was unfortunately in attendance for, was the Storm absolutely obliterating the Broncos, 40 points to four. I'll cop the blame for this one. I talked you into taking the Broncos here. I really thought it would be a good spot for them, or more so a bad spot for the Storm, I guess. You know, coming off that grind against Manly, um, you know, playing 90 minutes and then having to back up, play the Broncos this week and kind of look ahead spot to the, to the Rabbitohs next week. But... The Broncos were just fucking horrific. They did not stick in at, at all. At home, I thought they would put up a better performance. And to be honest, they had chances like in the first half um, and just you know bad fifth tackle options. And I guess you know that's what comes when you know your your, your halves are pretty garbage. Um, but you know, like I said in previous weeks, this Broncos team um, is not a top eight team this year. But they do have. You know, some positive points to look at. I guess they have, you know, their forward pack is getting better. They just need some playmakers in that team and they'll be fine. But um, yeah, the storm keep rolling in, in what was a pretty tough spot for them, I thought. And we didn't put any best bets because I was resisting. And my reason was just, I just don't want to go against this ruthless storm team after they lost. And yeah, the Broncos were shit, nowhere near good enough at home in a game they need to win. But give some credit to the team, and you've got to give credit to the Raiders in the game before. Give credit to the Storm, they were absolutely clinical, yep. absolute masterclass from them, and it just shows the talent they've got when they bring on guys like Pappenhausen, and he just keeps carving up. Is, they were in a mood. Good. We know that they always perform well at Suncorp. A lot of the players you know, might re- um, resound from, from Queensland. And their, their family comes out and watches them, and they carved them up. For the Broncos, you say they're not a top eight side. I mean, if Tabita Pangai Jr. And, and Gillette come back into that team, they're still on the cusp. They actually still might be a, a side that scrapes in. But what we probably overrated also was some of the wins they've had. We said, oh, the Broncos are playing a little better, but they beat shitty teams in like oh, Dogs course, and, yeah. and Dragons and Titans, right? And we overrated that. And we, we underrated the fact of, um, of Storm off a loss. Yeah, honestly, and I don't think we necessarily overrated those wins because we, you know, as we know, they're against two shit teams. It was more so just the confidence factor and, and having a chance to, to be in the eight again. Um, we thought that, that would give them a little bit of confidence, but um, yeah, definitely not. And then same sort of theory with the uh, with the Manly Knights game. We thought that Manly would be a, in a little bit of a letdown spot here after you know that one-point victory over the Storm in 90 minutes. Thought they might be a bit fatigued as well. And to be honest, it was a bit of a letdown spot for them. They weren't very good in the first 30 minutes. The Knights had chance after chance after chance, could not convert. Bad fifth tackle options. And honestly, like, things go a bit differently in that first half. I know you look at the score 30-6, to six, but the Knights had numerous chances in the first half. And Manly, honestly, looked gassed for about 60 minutes. They looked flat for about 60 minutes of that game. And the Knights were just horrendous in a spot that was an absolute must-win for them. So, um, yeah, very disappointing if you're a Knights fan, that's for sure. But Manly just keeps rolling in what... You know, they won by 24 points in this one. And I'd argue this was probably, you know, not even a very good performance by by their standards. 
I agree, but that's kind of their style, that they're not too flashy, but they can win ugly because they don't let their opponent have anything easy. And they made the Knights work. And we had our reasons to take the Knights, as you say. Their season was on the line. But the Knights actually had way more of the territory. I think at one stage, oh, yeah. second half, the Knights had like 50 tackles in Manly's half to like under 20 for Manly. But they weren't doing anything with the ball, which is weird for a team that's got Mitchell Pierce, who was like the form seven in the comp, and Kalen Ponga, who's electric. But my reasoning why, and we should know this by now, Connor Watson, I don't think he's a genuine nine, and he's just fucking woeful. He can't draw and pass. There was a moment where he got through, and he's like, where's Ponga? I'll give it to Ponga, I'll give it to Ponga, and tell me Turbo ate Ponga up. Like, made dummy or draw and pass, and the amount of times Watson's done that in his career, like, fucking get some cones, go in the backyard, not that kind of cones, but <laughs> practice <laughs> catching, kind of drawing, and passing. Uh, Mason Leno is not the same player this year. And you talk about missed chances. Kenny Dow dropped two tries in the first half, whereas Garrick, you know, scored a screamer that he picked up on his fingertips in, in midair and stayed in field. And that's the difference in the game because it was 8-6 to Manly at half time, and Knights covered the first half line for us. So it was game on. So Knights only themselves to blame. Manly, very impressive. Tom Trebojevic has not lost a game this season. That, that's ridiculous. And honestly, that was probably the turning point in the game. Um, you know, SKD drops that one that's right in the breadbasket, pretty much a certain try. And then, you know, literally four minutes later, I think, um, you know, Ruben Garrick scores a try that there's no way that should have been a try. The SKD chance was way better. And those little chances, you know, you really need if you're a, a fucking six and a half point underdog. Um, next up, the result that I guess surprised me was the Bulldogs beating the Panthers 16 to 8. Um, had three plays on the game, mostly leaning towards uh, overs. Uh, go up one and three, obviously, because the, the final score was sixteen to eight. Um, but yeah, I guess you know one of those ones where I don't know. Could we have seen it coming? Panthers off a seven-game win streak. We talk about this all the time. Um, you know, win streaks and losing streaks, and when they get snapped, you know, generally you want to fade the team the next week. But just given the situation, I know that the Panthers had won seven games in a row. They obviously lose last week. But they're still, you know, well in touch of the eight. They're still in the eight and figured, you know, this is one of those games where, you know, on the home stretch, there's going to be a few tough games to come. You have to take care of the Bulldogs. And, you know, I thought that the Panthers were probably the better team in the first half, you know, bombed a few chances, like even the over 17 and a half points in the first half. Who was it? Brent Naden, you know, tries to pick up a grubber instead of just planting it down. And that cost us the bet with that one. So, um, but... Impressive effort from the Bulldogs, honestly, because um, they, you know, usually you call this, this team like the Dogs of War, they put in 100% every game. They haven't necessarily this season, but this was one of those games uh, where they did. Um, so all credit to the Bulldogs, because unlike the Titans, uh, they've actually been putting in sometimes uh, this season, especially when they're out of contention. Bulldogs' effort was far beyond a lot of so-called, you know, top eight contending sides, obviously, the teams we've talked about in New Zealand and and Brisbane and and the Knights. Yeah, the Dogs, impressive win. But, like, each team scored a try early. We were on the overs. We just needed more than 17 in the first half. I think it was six all. Um, and, yeah, Penrith's just knocking down the door. And this is still with, like, 20 minutes left to go in the half. A grubber in behind catches him napping. And Naden can do any number of things. He can pick it up and then plant it. He can fall on it. Well, I don't know what he did he's instead. Been he so just good battered this season it. Too. Yeah, uh, yeah, he's their leading try scorer, and he only came into the team in about round seven. So you, you know they've got issues, but he did it. the only thing he could have done to not score, and it was under the sticks. So that's eighteen points first half in the first twenty minutes, and there was only one more try after the game. It's so crazy with certain moments. You wonder, had that been a try there, Penrith get you know six points ahead. A lot of things could have been different, but so not only did that obviously cost us directly our first half bet. Maybe it costs a couple others because the game doesn't go over and Penrith don't win. And now Penrith's on the outside looking in after their great win streak through the season. Some weird coaching decisions too, to be honest. Um, like, you know, Penrith, I don't know if they just thought they would be way better and just steamroll the Bulldogs, but they're not the kind of team that turns down a gift to with the best goal kicker in the comp at six all twice. And then, you know, when they're 13 on 12, they decide, yeah, th now this is the time to fucking waste two minutes and take the two when you're a man ahead. It just seems so strange to me. Um, anyway, moving on to a game that we actually won on. It was the Sharks beating the Rabbits 39 to 24. Uh, we had seven best bets on the game. Uh, goes six and one. Obviously, the Rabbits getting, um, you know, that late try to send that one over. 
Um, but yeah, that was one of the more impressive Sharks performances that I've seen this year. Um, the Sharks have been a tough one uh, to sort of bet on because they haven't been healthy, you know, pretty much all season. But we've said this time and time again, when this Sharks team is fully healthy, they are one of the best teams in the comp. And you saw it yesterday. I know you don't want to judge it off just one game. But honestly, when this team is fully healthy and has all their stars playing well, um, you know, they, they can play at a top four level. And they did yesterday. Um, don't take much away from the Rabbitohs. I mean, they fought hard. But when you run into, you know, a team that's playing like the Sharks at home, it's very, very tough to compete. I think they did fairly well to, to put on 24 points in the end. Yeah, you don't want to overreact to one performance, but the difference is the Sharks have not had many games a season with all of their stars and all their rep players on the field together. So you saw what they're capable of. I thought they were crisp as. I thought yeah, they that were. you know they were happy to move the ball from side to side and and use the overlaps. And Wade Graham had a stormer of a game, but yep. you know a lot of players stepped up and they opened up the Bunnies time and time again. Honestly, like to get 39 points, like they earned every one of them. Whereas the Bunnies. Got a couple of pretty like funny ones like kick off, strip a one on one strip and score the next tackle when they were already down twenty and they did that like kind of a, tr- a meaningless kind of backdoor try a couple of times. As you say, you can give the bunnies a bit of credit for not not giving up and points differential is going to be important and they did keep c- kind of fighting back and asking questions, but the sharks answered them every time. So again, I think we had six or seven plays and we won all but one because the bunnies late try pushed it over. But absolutely, we talk about how it's almost impossible to win the comp from outside the four, but the Sharks have the ability to at least upset some teams like yep. and get into the second, maybe third week of the finals. They're not a team that you'd want to play against because, um, yeah, their, their rep players are starting to look really sharp together. Oh, it's because the ladder, their ladder position, obviously their entire season, which, you know, most of their season they have not played with all those guys healthy um, and obviously Origin and that kind of stuff as well. Um, next up, the Roosters did a demolition job on the Titans, 58-6. to six. Um, I know, I think I said maybe 10 weeks or maybe 8 weeks ago, I never want to bet on this Titans team again. Um, and maybe this will be the last ever season. Uh, we really thought that, you know, maybe, just maybe, that line crept up to, to obviously 18. We got 18 points. Thought maybe they'll, they'll put up a decent performance here against the Roosters after laying, you know, two eggs in a row new coach, all that kind of, new coach bump, that kind of stuff. Um, I guess our one concern was, you know, do the Roosters look at this game and say, you know, we are going to want to pile it on for points differential. We did mention how close the plus minus was between, you know, second, third and fourth. And that's obviously how they did approach this game. And when the Roosters really want to put on a cricket score, they can. Um, But I'm totally done with the Titans here. Now, I know that we say, you know, all the time, when you have shit teams that are towards the bottom of the ladder, the only games that they should get up for are like rivalry games and games against, you know, top teams. The last three Titans games have been absolutely fold against the Storm, absolutely fold against the Broncos, your in-state rival, and now absolutely fold against the Roosters. So I'm completely done with the Titans. I think, um, you know, they're done. Their mind is not on footy anymore. Um, and, you know, you look at their roster, they should be better than they are, but it is completely mental with that team, and I think um, after the last three weeks where, you know, each one of those weeks, you could make an argument that they should have been up for that one against either a top team or an in-state rival, and they've laid three eggs in a row, um, I think that kind of shows where their head's at at the moment. And this is another game where we went against the best you know, one of the best sides in the comp. We know the Roosters are good. We know the Storm are good and the Raiders. And well, we went against the Bunnies, actually won that, but went against Manly. We know they're good, but it's the NRL. It's the closest comp in the world. You're catching a lot of points. It's not that easy that you can just bet the best teams 13 plus and it's going to win every game. And you look, the Roosters last week only beat the Dogs by eight points. And the Roosters had like three of their premier forwards out for this one, not to mention Friends been out a little while. But we took a couple bets like Titans to score in the first 23 minutes, Titans to be within eight and a half points first half because we knew they had to show up. They had to be like, all right, we've been horrendous for, you know, well, most of the year, but they've got a few outs. We've, you know, we've still got a, enough hands on deck to come out and, and not be embarrassed and not get flogged. But it was evident very early on, just like the second they dropped the ball, you knew they would concede because they, they're yeah. dropping their heads. And that's why... It just makes me angry because they're P hard. Honestly, at about by the time it was 16 nil, I was I was ready to turn off the TV and I was like, "Fuck them off! 
Fuck off the Titans. Let's play the comp with 15. Yep. Because what's the fucking point? This team has season ticket holders. People are watching on TV. And they're not fucking having a crack. Like, if you drop the ball, you know, that's the key there, that you have to be able to defend an error and be, show some resilience. If, if I was the guy who'd signed up Holbrook to coach, I'd say, no, nah, I've fucking changed my mind. I'm going to coach under 15 <laughs> B grade in Scotland next year because the kids will have a crack. Like, it was so embarrassing. And, of course, as I said before, you can't win any bets when um, if a team doesn't want to play. And I really question, like, the desire there. But it's still our bad as well because we knew – there was that give up factor. There was definitely that possibility and we were hoping that start well. They didn't. And you perfectly said it on Wednesday that points differential could mean the world come, you know, round 25 when we're sorting out who's at home and who makes the four and things like that. So the Roosters, once they smelt blood in the water, it was all over. Oh, absolutely. And it's funny, like, we, you know, obviously we put a lot of um, different variables into our into our handicaps and, and certainly motivation is one of those things. I know it's hard to kind of gauge in a point spread perspective, but it's like, you know, you look at these teams that we really thought would be motivated and, you know, come out and actually try this week and be the hungrier team. And they're the teams that fucking folded. Like, you know, Warriors in a perfect spot, must win, fold. Broncos, fold. Knights, fold. Um you know, who else? I guess that's... Titans. Titans, absolutely. Well, that's not a must win. But I mean, you know, those yeah. those teams like fucking Warriors, Broncos, Knights, all, you know, playing for a top eight spot, absolutely fold in, in a pee-hearted effort. But all right, I feel like a weight is off our shoulders now because that's, that's back-to-back losing weeks. We haven't done that in about 80 weeks, um, which is actually ridiculous. So now we can just concentrate on fucking... Winning this week, bouncing back, and not going three losing weeks in a row because that would be dreadful. But um, yeah, certainly do a bit more research next week and hopefully bounce back. Anything you wanted to add, Jake? Before we get out of here? No, I mean we got it wrong. I mean you look at the eight games. We you know unders on the Thursday. We got it right, and we were all over the Eels and the Sharks. So we got three games right, five games wrong, four of which were very wrong. Yes. And we pay the price. And you just don't win money every week. It's not easy. But I would just caution people that. Look, they can, you know, make what they want of how good our tips are and whether they want to follow them. But I am going to caution people about just assuming that the best sides will win by a high margin every week. Because, yeah, this is unusual to have teams giving up with so many rounds left. But that's just going to make it even more of a minefield um, and going to make things very interesting for the final few weeks. Really trying to figure out who you can safely put your money on and um, and believe you're going to get an effort. So. Look forward to doing that and getting back in the grind, and um, we'll see people on Wednesday. Absolutely, guys. Make sure you've uh, obviously in the app, the Tripod app. It's free to download, and if you're and make sure you're in our group. There's a link in the description to this video, and we will catch you Wednesday night, 6 p.m. for a breakdown of round 21. See you then.